Microsoft doesn't know when they can give you AI. If you work for Valve, seems like you're set for life. And looks like AMD is set, because now they can run CUDA. Finally, let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Thursday, July 18th, 2024. We're going to start off today talking about Copilot Plus PCs, everybody's favorite little devices that came out with Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite chips, and with people wondering, when can everybody else get it? This whole marketing operation of putting it only on the Snapdragon X Elite chips, despite the fact that AMD is launching new CPUs that can support this this month, and then Intel is supposed to come out with them in Q3, and uh, never mind the fact that basically every NVIDIA card can run this easily and at the same power efficiency as everything else for the last however many years. We'll just ignore all of that. And Microsoft doesn't really know when they're going to be able to bring it out because it's just going to happen sometime this year. Not even a guaranteed release date, not even a guaranteed time window. The 24H2 update, which stands for the second half of 2024, they're really taking advantage of the fact that it is six months long, not bringing it to their existing partners, the people that actually sell Microsoft laptops. The companies that they've been partnering with for years. The companies that are still trying to claw on market share and have actually made decent headway, like AMD with their AI 300 series. For some reason, they can't have access to Copilot Plus at launch, despite the fact that they have the hardware that can run it, their NPUs are equipped with enough tops to do it, and it's just indefinitely delayed, just like Microsoft Recall is. And if you can't tell, I'm just a little spicy about it because it doesn't appear to be for any justifiable reason other than somebody got paid a lot of money. How did this arrangement between Qualcomm and Microsoft work out? The entire Microsoft Copilot Plus event was between those two. Intel and AMD were nowhere to be found, even though they were having hardware events discussing all of this, saying that they're gonna be ready. Sure, you're gonna push Intel to the side because Lunar Lake's not ready, they're not gonna have the MPUs, but it's it's like a month later and AMD is ready. They're launching the AI 300s in about a week and you can't tell us when we're gonna get it. I think that's a little hog water, but I can guarantee that Valve employees could probably afford hog water. I, it sounds like a little delicacy. It was meant uh, derisively, but it could be something positive. I don't know. Because even though Valve's a quiet, privately owned company where we don't have a lot, whole lot of details coming out, because they're in a lawsuit about how much money they make, a lot of that information got leaked. And so The Verge got th their hands on some court documents where there's redacted information, but they didn't redact it very well because even though there's boxes you can still get the numbers out of it so now it's public record of uh, some data about valve's payment situation and how their employee structures works behind the scenes at least up until 2021 kind of the early years of the pandemic and kind of before the steam deck took off and was a major hardware hit but what we found out is that valve has roughly 350 odd employees which is very very small for the amount of money that they bring in and that's actually something that valve boasts about that they are more profitable per employee than Google, Amazon, or Microsoft, and that it's roughly $15 million per person that works at Valve, and turns out that that's not just money that's going into Gaben's pocket, even though their headcount has ballooned based on the data, a lot of these people that work at Valve are getting paid big time. It seems like the least amount of pay actually went to the hardware engineers who are working at Valve. Again, this is before the Steam Deck actually launched. They really had only launched some minor Steam machines. They launched the Valve Index and then kind of the Steam Control. Things didn't really work out, but those people are making roughly $450,000 a year each, and then it just scales up from there. So it, if you got a job at Valve, it looks like you're set for life. You're not getting publicly traded stock options, but you are being compensated handsomely. And they didn't want us to know that, but I also hope that those hardware engineers, since they've come out with the Steam Deck and the Steam Deck OLED, potentially got a pay raise, or as people say in other parts of the world, a pay rise, because they're, they're doing good work. I like I like what they're doing over there with the hardware stuff, and that's one of the things that Valve changed since 2021. Anyways, we'll keep you updated if anything notable comes out about this, but it was just a fun little fact that these people make enough to buy a lot of houses, and I don't want to talk about that part anymore, <laughs> so I'm going to let Reese talk about the deals. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. I hope you guys had a wonderful day yesterday, and hey, we had a successful live stream where we found community source deals 
These are some of my favorites that are still active that you can take advantage of. And first up, we have the HyperX Cloud 2 wired gaming headset going for only $47.49, making it $32.50 off. But then next up, we have this Be Quiet Pure Loop 2FX 360mm AIO CPU liquid cooler going for only $92.22, making it $62.68 off. And then lastly, we have this XFX Speedster Merc 310 AMD Radeon RX 7900 XTX going for only $869.99, which is a phenomenal price for a 7900 XTX. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brent for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, people wanted a deal on the Raspberry Pi case that Fractal showed off at Computex. People saw this little box that looks like a Fractal North and it houses a Raspberry Pi case because they were using it to show off their new Fractal headphones at Computex. And people were like, when are you gonna sell that? When are you gonna sell that? We want that. That's cute. That's beautiful. We want it. And Fractal was like, oh yeah, we'll get around to it. So the community was like, no, 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 we're not having any of that. And so makers and modders got their own 3D print files and provided that for themselves. It kind of hit the newswire two days ago that modders were doing that. And then yesterday, Fractal dropped the 3D print file for you to be able to make your own. And then you just kind of need to get the wood and acrylic to kind of make the whole panel yourself. But you can 3D print it yourself. Fractal's not going to sell it. But makers and modders providing you with Fractal Norse Raspberry Pi cases, Fractal themselves giving you the data. It's just a nice little thing for the North Pi. You can check it out linked in the video description. But what's also a nice little thing is getting out of the clutches of NVIDIA. You might remember that NVIDIA got raided by the French authorities because they're in an antitrust lawsuit about how they're handling certain things like who they allow access to the CUDA library. Or if things are finding their ways to work around how CUDA operates, NVIDIA has been shutting it down, like a previous operation known as LUDA, which got Intel and AMD GPUs to kind of work with CUDA so that it could actually do professional applications the way an NVIDIA GPU would do it. Slightly worse because there's other funny business going on, but it's been something that NVIDIA is now getting punished for. They're staring down the barrel of a 10% global revenue fine from France for shutting this stuff down. And now it seems like it's the perfect time for Scale to announce that they have a natively compiling CUDA app for AMD GPUs. This is a very large deal in terms of getting AMD GPUs up to snuff when it comes to professional applications that leverage the CUDA acceleration. Zluda got shut down despite the fact that AMD was kind of in partnership with them, at least investing some resources. But now Scale is announcing that they're here and that they accept CUDA programs as is. There's no need to port them to another language. It will just allegedly work on AMD GPUs. Now, again, this is a large deal because there hasn't been a massive application or massive of a software stack that has allowed this to happen. And one of the negatives about it, or at least the criticisms that could be leveraged here is that unlike other efforts, this is not open source, but that's kind of to the benefit of the project since Scale actually has some consulting that they do. And that's how they've been financing the effort to develop Scale so that CUDA could be leveraged on AMD. So they're not necessarily being able to give this away for free or make it available for everybody. There is a free plan plan for you to be able to check it out, but it likely will become a paid thing. But in professional applications, having to pay for this type of software isn't necessarily something that uh, is unheard of. So not open source, not free, but it now exists and could potentially make it so that AMD stops slipping in the market share for their GPUs because it's been a it's been a rough downfall for them in the RX 7000 series, despite the fact that I personally think it's been one of their best generations uh, that doesn't reflect in how many people are buying their chips. And I don't know if I bought what you said in the comments. So let me read it again and then repeat it back to you. Andre saying Intel is taking if you can't beat them, join them seriously. But hey, I guess that's what competition does all the better for us it seems like it might be a good thing i saw a lot of comments where people were just kind of like oh this is probably how they're trying to make up for 13th and 14th gen and it's like so yeah maybe maybe but if it's good for us in the the long run, it's a little bit of ends justify. This is the means mentality, which I don't typically vibe with, but I also know that engineering an entire new architecture isn't something that you could just whip up. It's not something that they just had sitting around on a shelf and they're like, hey, uh, that won't take 
any effort to launch. Let's get it out there. This this takes considerable man hours, both on the engineering front, the development front. It's 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 not a simple thing to come out with thinking sand, friends. And we got Slug Bunny saying AI and theft, the iconic duo of our time. I love I love the precedence of our times right now. Now low seventy eight saying Google is outraged by a company training an AI with data that was not consented to be used. They're just mad that a nonprofit is moving in on their business model. Uh, that's not at, at all what we reported on. Yes, this is happening to YouTube and, uh, you know, their Google owned enterprise, but it's not YouTube that they're stealing from. It's the creators who are actually investing and in uploading to the platform. It's not Google who's going to bat for this. It's all of the creators saying, hey, I invested heavily into my content and I was not contacted i do not consent i consent to uploading my videos to youtube i'm engaging in a private transaction with google for them to host store and serve my videos in turn for either exposure or adsense revenue and i have a contract with them to do that i don't have a contract with OpenAI. I don't have a contract with a Luther AI. I don't have a contract with Apple for them to take my content and distribute it and use it and modify it however they want. So it's not Google who's going to bat here. It's the content creator saying, hey, we didn't agree to this. We didn't consent to this. Just because you can watch it for free as a public member of society doesn't mean that we've agreed to you in a business contract that you're allowed to use our content in that way. So it's it's slightly different than that. Then we got Bubba saying, Intel continues to release new LGA 1700 CPUs. Me, cries an EVGA Z690. Are they like, they're not developing new BIOSes for it, right? Like, is that, that's like done. I didn't, I, I don't know how it works. I don't have an EVGA setup. Like I, I know they're not making new hardware, but that makes sense that they're also not investing in the, the software or firmware for it. So I'll cry with you, I suppose. And then lastly, we got Charvet saying, on many videos of the new ARM-based laptops, I've seen that some x86 apps do not run despite there being a Prism emulator and an error message pops up. So is there a way to force x86 apps to run or do you have to patiently wait till the developer drops an ARM version? I haven't found a simple solution for how to get this to work. I'm sure there is some sort of workaround that somebody can find where you can kind of force it to happen, but that, kinda is the point, right? Like Qualcomm is saying they're gonna take 50% market share. They're gonna be everywhere. They're gonna dominate where Intel and AMD have infiltrated offices in the normie pipeline for computers. When I can't run things just by clicking run and then I have to go and do a convoluted workaround, you have now made me an early adopter. That's a completely different market segment than getting to 50% of everybody buying it. So I, there may be a way, it's not easy, it's not simple, it's not intuitive, it's not baked in, and therefore, uh, it's frustrating. Unless you want the challenge, in which case, dive right in. Dive in head first, struggle. Be on the, be on the bleeding edge of arm on windows. It's definitely going somewhere based on all of the signals I have right now. And I'm going somewhere else. Uh, I don't know. Hot news tomorrow? We might hit a million subscribers tomorrow? We're, 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 we're dangerously close to that. It's possible. We'll be streaming today, doing a PC build, and if we hit a million subs, woohoo!